Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to the video that I put off filming for as long as I possibly can because it does take me an absolute age to film this video but I'm always so grateful when I do. It is my handbag collection and it's the up to date one. So I'm filming my 2021 handbag collection and oh my goodness the last video that I filmed of this got 2 million views I think which was absolutely insane. So I thought I would do it again and talk you through my collection which has been a collection that I have built since not that long ago, Lumi. Come on now. <laughs> she's, she's climbed to the top of my boxes and she's meowing at the top of her lungs. Finished? Wow. Not quite? Come settle here, my love. Now, I want to preface this video by letting you all know that I have been building this collection for over 10 years. A lot of the bags have been sold on, but I've been into bags for as long as I can remember. And this isn't something that I've just built over a couple of years. This is sort of like, it's like a, over a third of my life that I have devoted to buying handbags. And I still love them as much now as I did then. I started off buying handbags secondhand and it has just kind of progressed over the years. And now, you will have seen that I bought one of these sort of like pinnacle bags in any handbag lover's collection, I guess. And so I thought it would be good to chat you through all of the items that I have in my collection because I am about to have a big clear out of this. So before we do so, I'm gonna talk you through all of these items. I keep a lot of my bags on show. I find that really, really easy in terms of choosing my outfits and kind of look around, see what I've got and pick out the one that I think that goes best with the outfit. But I don't keep all of them on display. I keep a lot of bags behind here as well on the top shelf. And I also keep a lot of my holders in my travel closet at the back. I will do my best to link all of the bags in the description box down below if they aren't available anymore because some of these won't be then unfortunately I will link something similar but I can't I can't help you out there I'll also be talking you through what it is that I like about the bag whether I might be potentially selling it and things that maybe I don't like about them as well I'm gonna keep it brief though because there's there's quite a few so I also want to say that on purpose I have not watched my last handbag collection video because I want to see if like the way that I feel about these bags is the same. So I want to just talk through exactly what I'm feeling right now and what my thoughts are right now and I don't want to be influenced by what I felt back then. So this is completely detached from my last one. So there might be some repetition, who knows? But um, anyway, let's get into it. I'm going to start over this side. So let's get into the handbags. Okay, first up we have this Carolina Herrera bag. I don't actually know the name of this, so what I'll do is I'll try and pop the names of the bags on screen or in the description box down below. This was part of a campaign that I did in the summer or the end of summer for the launch of Carolina Herrera lipsticks and they are just incredible and they clip onto the bag and they make it into like a little bit of a bag charm. I cannot believe how many of you just loved this bag. I got so many messages about this bag. I think you can't go wrong with a sort of timeless tan bag. They just look great, especially at this time of year where you want slightly warmer hues. Now, I haven't worn this bag much at all. I definitely find this particular shape and size to be something that is more of a summertime bag for me personally. I'm not a huge fan of the lock on this either. It can be a little bit fiddly. That may be part of the reason why. But since I got this bag, I've really looked at Carolina Herrera bags in a different light. And um, I really, really, really like them. So I wanted to start off with this one and let you know what I think. Obviously, I'm partial to a top handle bag. I like to have both a crossbody and a top handle. And sadly, this doesn't have a top handle, but it's practical and that is what is important, I guess. Next up, we have a Bulgari Serpenty Forever bag. And this is actually a bag I don't think I've ever ever worn. This for me is a bit of an heirloom and it's sort of one of those pieces that I, it's such a moment because the Bulgari team actually gifted me this for my wedding and for me this is just such a special piece that I, ha I haven't worn it. I now just keep it on display, I don't want to ruin it and maybe that's one of the silly things that I do with bags but sometimes I just, I attach memories to them and I'm quite a sentimental person and so this particular bag is just one that I keep for not even special occasion. It's just 
a little memento because not only was it such a huge thing to have received it from the team but it also is just one of the most beautiful bags and i have loved the serpenty forever style so much you guys will know i actually bought my first serpenty forever bag because i loved it so so much i still got it a little bit broken but i've still got it and so to receive this was really special this is the bigger size as well and i think for me this is probably slightly too big i definitely love the smaller sizes so that's why it's quite easy for me to sort of keep it for this special occasion because i generally prefer smaller bags especially when they're like crossbody like this so it's easy for me to keep this one for quite a special special memento seeing as we're talking about the serpentine forever bags i have to show you this one i think i'll show you my entire collection of them first this one is probably my favorite style from the sort of Serpenty Forever family. This is a silver metallic top handle and crossbody, so it's really practical. I love how it almost looks kind of like, um, like a vintage, kind of vintage vibe. Do you imagine like Audrey Hepburn wearing this or something like that? I really, really love this because it combines handbags that I love, top handle and crossbody. I love that it also almost looks like a jewel. It's just so spectacular in itself. It's a real talking piece. I actually wore this for the first time in Cannes on the red carpet and I wore it with a half penny dress. And I generally tend to save this one, this more metallic-y finish for best. I've also got the gold crossbody one, which I'll show you next. Again, that's more of like an evening bag for me rather than a day bag. But I love this particular style of Serpenty Forever bags and I think that they are such a special piece to put with an outfit, especially for the evening. So I do love them and have quite a few. Now this is the bag that started the Serpenty Forever love. This is my sort of goldy, bronzy coloured one. And I think I bought this from Selfridges. It's a little bit broken now, but I still use it. I don't let that stop me. The popper has come off. It wasn't a defect with the bag. It was just a little bit like manhandled, I think. And, and um, over the years, it's just kind of worn. I've probably had this about four or five years now, and I still love it as much as I did when I bought it. And I don't think I'll ever, ever sell this bag because it's such a beautiful piece. You can just wear it crossbody, and it instantly adds a little something, something to the outfit. So I have loved this one very lovingly it's a little bit scuffed and worn but again this is one of those bags that i have so many fond memories of wearing it and i've loved it so much over the years and still wear it today so it won't be going anywhere in my wardrobe next up we have another crossbody top handle bulgari handbag and i think i think it was the first paid campaign i ever did with bulgari and this bag is again another special piece in that story and like my career story that I don't think I could ever like let this go but it's such a beautiful like feminine pink color as well which I've got quite a lot of like the dual tones this was something different it's matte and I think you can't go wrong with having this more powdery pink color in your collection as well it's super super feminine I actually think that if I went back to Cannes and I wore the same dress and I had this bag, I think I probably would have worn this bag with that dress. At the moment, because I think I received this during lockdown, this one obviously hasn't gone out. For me, this is just such an evening bag and so, so beautiful that it's not been shown the love, much like a lot of my bags. And I'm sure you're sat there looking at your wardrobes thinking, yeah, <laughs> not a lot of love going on there. <laughs> And the last piece in my Bulgari Serpentine Forever bag, have I ever said that word so many times in all my life? No. Is this black and almost kind of like metallic one. This actually glows in the dark, okay? I know. And it's got this like, almost like snake skin effect to it. And this is just such a statement. I wore this a lot at Christmas last year. And again, I worked with Bulgari on their snow globe and it was just unreal unreal so again all of these have like a little bit of a story and i think that that's one thing that i do is i attach like i said stories to my bags because i love fashion i love handbags and a lot of these brands like 16 year old lydia would never have believed that she would now be like working with them so yes it was very very exciting so that is the last one in my bulgari collection which is beautiful this bag is heavy. <laughs> what do we have in this that is making this so heavy? It's just stuffed with, what's it called? Dust bags. Okay, next up is <laughs> what I like to call my Chanel lunchbox. And I really do love this style. I think it's so beautiful. This is actually, it's not a lunchbox guys. Okay, it's not. It may look like one, but it's not. They call it their vanity case, which it could be a lunchbox. It could be a vanity box. It depends. It depends how you look at things in life. I feel like it's a bit, it's a bit like the glass half empty, half full. 
type of mentality? Is it a lunchbox? Is it a vanity case? Let me know in the comments down below. For me, it's a vanity case, but I humour you by calling it a lunchbox. It's a beautiful, beautiful bag and I love it. I would probably say that at the time I really wanted a nude Chanel bag and I don't think this is the prettiest of nude colours, but hear me out. When you wear like an all cream beige kind of outfit, it really brings this bag to life. So I definitely think that it's got its place, but it's not a versatile nude. It's very yellow undertone, so it's not the easiest nude to kind of use and, and style, if that makes sense. And also, I think I vaguely remember mentioning this in my last video, but this chain, it's just, uh, just I don't even know what to do with it. It's it's all kind of like knotted up and like this bit here, if you can see, is like, it's just like, where did you come from? How did you get there? Where in this chain did you just kind of twist like that? <laughs> it's also considering it's not been like worn the most out of all of my collection, it's tarnished quite a lot. Like I'm sure that you can remember when I've worn this throughout like vlogs and things like that. This particular Chanel lock is, is quite tarnished and the nude, if you look, can you see on there? It's very black. The corners have worn nicely though, but yeah, for me, it, it's just not my favorite, but I, I still love it. I, I kind of wish I'd got the black and pink version that was sort of the original one, but that was long gone by the time I discovered it. I think I saw it on um, Miss Gunner. Is that her name on Instagram, Miss Gunner? I saw her with it and I was like, oh my God, that bag but I couldn't get it sadly. So this was the one that I got. Hopefully there'll be other styles that I'll see and maybe one day, I'm not gonna rule this one out in terms of maybe selling it on because I could probably get this in a color that's better suited to my collection. Oh my gosh, we are one cubby hole down, one cubby hole down. <sighs> okay, next up we have the iconic Chloe Nile bag. And this bag again, is this just, I think, <laughs> I think that every bag kind of has a story in my collection, but this one, is still such a beautiful and wearable piece. I just think it's such a work of art and so like innovative. Like when have you seen a bag like this? It reminds me of like horse riding tack. Like this almost reminds me of the bit between the horse's mouth and teeth, obviously very big, but like just, you know that those chunky bits that are at the side, it just reminds me of all of those things. And I think it's beautiful. And I don't know if they still make this style anymore. I'm not sure. They definitely have the Chloe Tess bag. Is it the Tess bag? And I saw that Fleur got one of these bags, another one of these bags at Christmas. And I was like, oh, you're really making me like want that bag. But I've not caved yet because I feel like this one is still slightly more me. It's a really beautiful nude as well. This is a really versatile kind of nude. It's pinky, but kind of a little bit dirty pink, which works really well. I also love the suede to the side. And yeah, it's just a really beautiful bag. It goes really well with my Chloe boots that I've still got. So this is one that's kind of a, an icon in my style history because it was a real sort of like prominent bag throughout my vlogs a couple of years ago. And so, yeah, let me know if you remember the Chloe Nile times and you remember me getting it as well because it was like out of stock everywhere. Let me know. Carrying on with those equestrian vibes, we have the Dior saddle bag. And this bag was a purchase after I went to Cannes with Dior. My gosh, it must be like two years ago. It was me, Ali, Victoria, Alex, and was it, I think it was just the four of us. My gosh, it feels like another lifetime ago, doesn't it? They actually dressed me for that, and that was, again, another like, moment in my career and I was wearing this bag but the slightly bigger one and I even wore this exact guitar strap to go with it and when I got home I missed that bag so I decided to go and actually pick up the one in the more me size like this little mini size is, is very me I often take this strap off and wear this as kind of well when it was a pre-covid world I often take the strap off and just wear this as like an evening bag it looks so beautiful with like slip dresses and strappy shoes so I'm, I'm kind of making a mental list of all of the bags and outfits I'm gonna wear when we're out of this. 
there's posy vibes people the end is nigh <laughs> um, but for this moment it's still a bag that i love it still fits very well with my style this is quite edgy for me at the moment i feel like my style has gone back to a slightly more like feminine classic style but if ever i don't want to wear this particular strap i have like a number of just plain black ones that have the same yellow gold that i just swap it out for and it looks really cute as a crossbody as well it does fit my phone in it and i am actually planning on getting myself a smaller phone but that is always a win for the small handbag lovers amongst us next up we have another kind of like icon i think in like the handbag world as well as the shoe world it is the uh, Valentino rock stud bag this is the mini and this is probably the size that I love the most in this bag however this bag does not get worn a lot my style isn't particularly like rocky and I feel like this is quite a rocky bag even though the shoes are as well I tend to wear those a lot more I don't know why that is I also have the matching sandals but I think that this could be a bag that in the future I potentially sell on I'm not sure I feel like it has its place and it looks so super cute but i'm just not sure if it's very me at this particular moment in time it definitely doesn't get the wear that some of my other bags get but i also feel like it is especially in the blogging world this is like a bag that everyone remembers the rock stud like everyone and i feel like most girls that love like luxury items they they probably have some kind of rock stud piece in their collection but yeah i'm undecided on this one next up we have a vintage Fendi baguette bag and I have never worn this. This was a bag that I was influenced to purchase by Audrey from Be Frassy. She has like the best vintage bags. Um, I've just never worn this and perhaps it's the particular, it's even got dust on it, oh my gosh. Uh, perhaps it's the particular colorway that it comes in. I don't know, but it's just never been a bag. I feel like maybe I'm just not, I'm just not that like Carrie Bradshaw vibe girl, who knows. So this could be one that I potentially sell on as well because it's cute, but it's just gathering literal dust in my wardrobe. So perhaps um, it's one that I can sell on, but maybe one day it will be worth something. Who knows? You just don't know what's going to happen with bags. And we all know that bags at the moment are like the investments to make in terms of like fashion pieces. So yeah, undecided on this. Very cute, nice and lightweight, bit of an icon, but not sure. Next up, we have another Fendi purchase. This is like the modern day Fendi baguette, and it's kind of like a, it's almost like padded, and it's got the monogramming on it. I wore this a lot when I went to Ibiza, and it's it was a bag that I don't really have in my collection. Like, I didn't have a white bag, and I'm not sure whether I feel like I need a white bag. I'm not sure, but I do I do love this style, particularly because it has the top handle and the crossbody. When bags are released that are like iconic in that way, I always have to purchase. And this one um, was actually really handy. It's good for like keeping little bits in, especially if you're traveling, which nobody is right now. So it's probably why it's been a little bit redundant, but definitely when I go on like holiday and things like that, I um, just have like the bare minimum in my bags. I don't like to carry big bags with me. And so these kind of things are super useful. I feel like it's kind of like the smaller the outfit, the smaller the bag. Does that make sense? <laughs> so yeah, I'm decided, but I don't think I'll be selling it anytime soon. Next up, we have a Jimmy Choo handbag. And this was from a campaign that I worked on with Jimmy Choo. It must be like a year or two ago. And I thought this was just absolutely beautiful. It's just, it feels almost like boho glam. You can imagine this worn with like a really slouchy cardigan, some like suede nude leather boots and it just kind of adding a little bit of boho glam can you imagine this at coachella somewhere like that one day in the future oh i feel like i'm doing like a tour of the world just by going through my handbags at the moment i'm like oh where in the world would i wear this when all of this is over but yeah this is just like the most beautiful boho vibe the only thing i would say this is a savage for pulling things from your hair to the fabrics and I've got to be honest, it's, it's, a, it's a destroyer. It's destructive and be careful, wear with caution. Yeah. Next up, we have the Louis Vuitton Capucines bag. This was, my goodness, this bag is old. And I have to say that this is one of the most robust and durable handbags I have ever, ever owned. However, and I think this is a great handbag. I think I might be selling this bag because it's not a bag that I really wear anymore. And I, I love the style. I think this is a bit of an in-between kind of size. And I think I've just maybe 
like I think I've fallen out of love with it. I think I've also, I don't want to give too much away, but yeah, I think that this would be one of those like one in one out situations and this one loses. So yeah, if I was to buy this style of bag again, I think I'd go for the smaller one because I really love that. It's so elegant. And now they've started doing the smaller one in more of the sort of simple colors because for a long time they only did them in the exotics and I'm just, I've never really been into exotics. So yeah, so I think maybe this one might be one that you doesn't sort of stay, but you know, I loved it and it's a great bag. Like this still looks, brand new it doesn't look like i've worn this bag at all and if you are around here and have been around here for a while you'll know this bag has been worn like worn to within an inch of its life next up we have my birthday bag which is one of the limited edition dior pieces and these are the things that i really kind of like fall for when they're done in my style and this is so beautiful it definitely hasn't been worn that much but it's one of those pieces that i think i'll probably uh, keep forever because it is so beautiful i feel like it communicates my love of like botanical wild english gardens and it's like a pinnacle moment i guess it's kind of funny isn't it because i got this for my birthday last year and then I discovered gardening and like my garden and began building my own garden. So again, this is one of those items that is, is a pinnacle moment in my life. And I get to look at that and think that was the year that I discovered gardening and I even got the bag to match. <laughs> um, I always find that the Lady Dior bags are brilliant. They are timeless. It's a style that Dior consistently does. It's kind of like the Chanel classic flap of Dior. And I don't necessarily love the larger sizes, but I think from the medium to the small to the, to the mini, those are the sizes that I think are really good and work for me. This fits like all of the stuff that I need in it. This is the medium size. I can get my diary in here and get my iPad and it's pretty good for like getting a lot of stuff in. But, but yeah, this is definitely more of a workwear bag for me and I've not been going anywhere for work. So <laughs> it's not seen much love. Okay, in this cupboard, oh, coming right out, we have one of my most loved and probably one of my own favorite bags and one of the bags that I just don't think I'll ever, ever part with. This was like the Celesti Celestial, Celestial bag that I bought from Dior and this is the medium size as well. This is a limited edition piece and when they bought it out, I was like, holy dough balls that is beautiful it's all like beaded and intricately done like the back is just as beautiful as the front um i have lost a few of the beads on here it's not necessarily durable but it's beautiful and it is practical as well like i said about the other one it, it fits everything that i need in it from my diary to my ipad to my phone to a hell of a lot of makeup and perfume so um it's practical as well as beautiful and it's such a talking piece like even like men who have no interest or love of handbags will comment on this bag because they are like that is a stunning piece so i'm always very proud that i got this one because it was just one of those things where it just happened and i was like <gasps> amazing and I still love it today. Okay, in this cupboard we have a lot of my colourful bags and bags that maybe can't fit on my shelves. We've got a lot of Fendi peekaboos in here because I got those in a lot of colours. First up we have the lilac bag that, that I was given by the brand when I worked on one of their pop-ups for um, their store on Bond Street. That was like sort of when we first came out of lockdown and it was really exciting, but like the streets were dead and it was so bizarre. But I really felt like I was like, I was really into pastels at the time. And I think the pastels obviously groundbreaking for summer, I know, but um, I don't have a lilac bag and lilac is such a beautiful color to wear in spring and summer, especially with like lilac florals. I love this and I actually loved this strap as well because it made it a little bit more edgy, but again, you can swap that strap out for um, a chain strap or something like that, but it's such a good size as well. I do love the smaller sizes again in the peekaboo. I probably don't go larger than the small size of the peekaboo because they actually fit so much stuff. Like these are such great bags. And I also think that this is a really good option if you're not wanting to move into like the Hermes vibes. This has that, but it's not got the same price tag or difficulty to buy. So I feel like it has the elegance of Hermes and like the Birkin and the Kelly, but it's like not the same 
the same, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I feel like this was my first sort of area where I was like, oh, I really like this bag. And it kind of gives me those like Hermes vibes as well and, and that, that elegance to it. Oh, and then, yeah, well, now we're here, aren't we? We'll get to that. <laughs> uh, so that's the lilac one. Then we also have this beautiful, like, this reminds me of Mac Morange. Is that the right word? This is like a, just an insane flame, suede uh small i think it's, is this small or mini so beautiful such a talking piece color really practical handle on it holds loads of stuff and is is pretty much timeless as well so i, I love this style and again loads of you will remember oh this peekaboo which was from a campaign i worked on with netta porte this is like the kind of like merlot colored one i think this is the small and the other two is more of like the mini size i think this holds even more, although it doesn't hold my diary or my iPad. So this is like, I need to shove in a load of makeup, my phone, loads of faff and things like that, but it still feels like a small bag and it's really nice and lightweight as well. It's not like getting a, a designer bag and it's like really heavy in itself. Uh, this is so practical. And then this one has the silver hardware as well. So yeah, I love this. Next up is my pink chanel boy bag this is a small and this definitely does not see a lot of wear but i just love this bag it is the perfect size for me i used to have the black i think it's the medium size and i sold that because it was just too big this size for me is like the most elegant but it doesn't hold a lot of stuff weirdly but this one was one that i got from vestier collective and it's like hot pink and then it's got this boucle trim around the side and it's got the, the gold hardware as well the boy bag is was a new kind of classic edition that they introduced and is still around today so this style is very much like current and wearable today but i i, I just love this color but i don't know whether this color loves me maybe i need to be a little bit more like pink in my vibes but at the moment i just love neutrals and i feel like that's always been the way and so when i add a pop of color i'm a bit like oh how do we feel about this but love the style of bag and love this particular bag as well next up we have a bag that is too big to fit on my shelves at the moment this is a todd's bag and um i'm a huge huge fan of todd's shoes and this bag is so beautiful it's really got that like minimalist vibe to it and this would make a really good work bag it's such a nice size for diaries and laptops and things like that. It's got really beautiful suede interior as well. And it's got the crossbody, really nice, practical, chunky strap, but also the top handle as well. And again, that universal kind of tan color, which is just so classic. It's not really got like any defining features, which means that this bag is gonna stay timeless and wearable in your wardrobe. And I think that Todd's is like one of those like brands that you don't necessarily always think of for handbags. I definitely think more for shoes with them, but this was really lovely. I love Todd's ready to wear as well. Their, their clothing is oh, it's so, such a small like edit, but wow. There's no bags in this one. So we are moving swiftly onto this side. We are kind of on the home stretch. <laughs> um, now we are moving into more of my Lady Dior collection. This was one I purchased from Harrods. I bought this the day that this one launched and this was like a different take on the classic black bag. This is my third Dior, Lady Dior medium size. And it just has this kind of like almost, it's just like textured leather effect with the champagne hardware. It's a great bag to add a bit of texture to an all black outfit. I find that this really kind of like elevates an outfit. It's really soft as well. And the, the weight of this is really nice. It's not too heavy. And again, it's in that timeless style. So it's, it is really, really wearable. I think I still have yeah, I still have some of the plastic on this because I just never take the plastic. There's so much like little mini plastic bits on bags that I'm constantly like, oh look, we have we have plastic still on this one. Uh, but it's been worn so, so much and um, it's one of those bags that I, I love. I really do love. Next up we have <laughs> the Sage Lady Dior bag that I featured in my best and worst. This was a bag that I purchased again, I think it was just after the first lockdown. And I, I think this color is so beautiful. And I know that so many of you were really, really fond of this bag in that. And you were like, no, Lydia, you're not gonna get rid of it. I have no plans to get rid of this bag just yet because I do think that this color is beautiful. I'm just 
working out when I'm gonna wear it. And um, even if I can make out that like, this was to commemorate my love of sage, <laughs> when I painted my entire house sage. It's such a beautiful color and such a calming color to look at that um, I have no plans, I have no plans. And this is actually the only one that I have in a small. I have the sort of like mini size back there, but this is a small, so it's slightly bigger. And I definitely find that this has a greater potential for filling up. It's a long way of saying that it's got more space. But yeah, you can basically fit a lot more stuff in this than mini, but I do love the mini. The mini is so elegant. So yeah, no plans, no plans. This is the iconic mini Lady Dior, and this bag is so well loved. It could probably do with a little bit of a zhuzh, but I even like, at one point there was ink on this. I don't know how, but it's just like disappeared. But I had ink on this that I could not get out. And now it is, I don't even, it was on the front as well. It was on the front. Um, but this is just like the perfect pinky nude and it goes with so many of like my nude shoes. This goes perfectly with my rock studs as well, which I find works really well. My rock stud sandals in this bag is one of my favorite summer looks as well. It's just so understated and timeless. I love it. It's tiny and sometimes I'm like stuffing stuff into this, but the size is so beautiful for wearing with like dresses like this in summer um, and even winter. So I, I love this. Probably my favorite size from Christian Dior, Lady Dior bags. I love it. Maybe one day I'll, I'll treat myself to a new one. <laughs> I don't need to though, I've got this one. It's just one of those things, isn't it? <laughs> okay, next up, we are moving on to the newest addition in my handbag wardrobe and one that I never ever thought would come to fruition, to be honest. This is my Hermes Birkin 30. This was purchased actually from a consignment store. It's Cellier, I got it from there. There was a lot of discussion about this bag and I really didn't think that there would be um, an issue with the terminology that I used and perhaps I wasn't, I wasn't clear. Perhaps my excitement on this particular bag got the better of me, but this bag was purchased from a consignment store and basically they are like a, a reseller because a lot of the time when you buy an Hermes bag, you can buy it for one one price and you can sell it for almost double because they are so sought after and people want them so much that they have such a higher resale, resale value. So I paid more for this bag, like hands up, I paid more for this bag, but it was a new bag because it hadn't been worn and it still had all of the seals on it. It was still in the box, blah, 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 I had the receipt, never been worn, no signs of wear. So it was new in that sense, but it had been purchased before. So in my head, I was like, I was thinking of like when you list something, like if I list something on Depop and it's brand new, I'll say like brand new with tags or something like that. That was the condition that this came in, but it was obviously being resold. Anyway, <laughs> I would hate for anyone to think that I'm like not being clear on things. It was purchased secondhand, but the bag was brand new. Does that make sense? Anyway, this bag has been lovingly used so much since it's arrived and it is just such a versatile bag. I'm actually planning on going today to pick up my 7RP, Rue something, bag insert and um, it's gonna help keep it structured because this is the sort of softer leather and keep it organized as well, which I'm really looking forward to. This has ignited a beast, okay? This bag has ignited a beast within me and that is why I know that when I get my Hermes Wish, I, um, I know that I'll want to sell some bags because they aren't gonna get the, the love that they should. And this bag has certainly taken all of my love at the moment in my collection. I just, oh, everything about this bag makes me so happy. And it's a real moment. I'm glad that I like waited for the bags that are perfect for me and for me to also fall in love with the brand in the way that like I did. And yeah, I've just had such a great experience with the brand as well. So that's, that's lovely as well. Um, I know that my little handle protectors also cause uh, some controversy. The reason why I don't have a twilly is because I haven't found a twilly that I like. So I'm not gonna just go and buy a twilly for the sake of it. And these also mean that it doesn't add pattern to it. So say if I was wearing this bag with this dress, in fact, I wouldn't want the twilly because I wouldn't want the two patterns like conflicting and almost competing against each other. So for me, they work really well. They might not be to everyone's taste, but sometimes you've got to be a little bit practical and I'm, I'm fine with them. So yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me too much, but I appreciate people have some very strong views on this. <laughs> anyway, that's my favorite bag in my collection at the moment. So yes, this takes pride of place in my collection. <laughs> Next up, I have a shocker for you. This is the Chanel Classic Flap. I think this is the double flap 
and I can't remember what size this is, maybe it's a small. I feel like this sizing is really, like it throws me off. But this is a bag that I think that I will sell because I don't, I don't wear it. I just, I don't wear this bag, probably because it doesn't have a top handle. I don't know why, I feel like you're supposed to love this bag and I don't feel like I ever have loved this bag as it should be. And just because it's a classic and I feel like at one time or maybe even still now, it might still be that sort of pinnacle bag in, in anyone's collection. For me, it doesn't fit my style and I, I feel like I've had to, you can see how difficult this is for me to, for me to accept, but it's, it's one of those bags that it just, it's never, it's never worked. As much as I willed it to, it, it just doesn't work for me. And so I think this will be another one that maybe goes to a better home. So yeah, and I also find that with the double flap, it's just a faff and like the, the double flap pushes this over and it's just, considering this hasn't been worn that much, it does look like it's been worn quite a lot. Oh, I'm finding lots of stuff. Or more of pizza, Rosa Neroli, love that. My brightening eye drops, love those. And a MAC mullet over powder kiss lipstick. Love finding stuff in handbags. Uh, but yeah, a bit of a shocker with that one. I wonder if you feel the same way. Let me know. I'm open to all kind of like discussions and like constructive opinions, but how do you feel about this bag? Because I'm not sure. Continuing on with the Chanel hype. This was also in my best and worst video, but this is one that I love. This is the size I love. This is perfect for me. And I love the detail. This makes the perfect evening bag. Little clutch bag that's easily thrown across body. I just, everything about this bag I love. Even though it doesn't fit huge amounts, I never want to take too much out with me on evenings out with friends or whatever. And so it's just beautiful. And I wear it so, so much. It's also got the champagne hardware, which makes it really versatile as well. I love the pearl detailing on this. And I just find that this is like, I find this quite timeless. I know people were sort of like, not sure whether this was timeless, but for me, this is timeless. And it just gets so much wear and well did before everything. It's such a wonderful bag. And I, I definitely didn't realize when I bought it, how much wear it was gonna get, especially just for like evenings out and stuff like that. Cause it's almost like a casual bag. And this styled up with like military boots and like a black dress is just, it's a great way to wear an all black outfit and add a little bit of detailing to it. So yes, love this bag. Love, 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 love. We have another Fendi peekaboo and this is one that I actually purchased secondhand from Lorna Lux. She was the girl that actually got me into the Fendi peekaboo to begin with, with this bag. I think we went to Bista Village together and I'm pretty sure she was wearing this bag on that day and it was kind of when I really started to get to know her and this bag, I've just admired it ever since, but never taken the plunge. And then when I saw that she was selling it, I was like, this is just too perfect. So I bought this off her. I think the money went to charity as well for her brother-in-law, but this is just, again, a, a bit of a classic and such an easy wearable style. This is the small size, I believe. So it, it fits a lot of stuff in it for like a day bag. As long as you don't need to be taking tech equipment, like I said about the others, this one is brilliant. So yeah, this won't be going anywhere in my collection. I love it. I love that I was able to get it secondhand as well. So I am very, very happy with this particular purchase. I think I purchased it for like just over a grand, I think. So yeah, very happy. Next up, I have a, another Fendi piece, but this is like a crossbody. I don't even know what this is called. This was one I purchased from Farfetch and this is kind of like a canvas bag. It's a very practical one. I intended this for like walks and just silly things like whenever we went skiing and things like that, just having a durable bag. I personally love designer bags. So I don't feel like my outfit is put together unless I've got one and that's just me personally. And so having one that's more durable for those times when you are like doing things that you don't wanna be worrying about your best bags, but you still want that like, I'm a girl who loves bags. This one I just thought was really good, whether I use it for dog walks as well, when I take Porter out, but this is just a durable, really like safe as well because it's the zip closure, crossbody, good if you're going on like city visits when everything goes back to normal, just, just a good, practical and durable handbag. And so this one was something that I actually didn't feel like I had in my collection. I don't have a camera bag style and this just fits everything. Camera, phone, passport, purse, lipstick, perfume, all of that kind of stuff. So um, I think this is a good one to have in your collection, whether you go for this style or you go for like the Gucci Soho Disco, just a good camera bag style is always good. It's always good. This was the Carolina Herrera handbag that I was referring to that I was sent from the team and I just think this is so beautiful. I 
fell in love with this as like a style. It almost looks like a saddle bag and it's so well made. I often wear this on dog walks as well because this is so easy to throw on and it looks so nice with like riding boots and things like that. And the color is so perfect. It's got kind of like boho, but also equestrian vibes and very simple, like flat closure, very easy to wear, very easy to style, nice and understated as well. It's not got like the big CH um, logo, it's just got this small little, almost like, it almost looks like a stirrup and I just love this, so I wanted to share it. The icon that is the Pochette Matisse, this bag. What can I say about this bag that I haven't already said on my channel before? I love it, it's never going anywhere in my collection thus far, it's a bag that I go back to time and time again, it's so wearable with the more neutral creams, blacks, browns, and it's one of those bags that I think that is quite coveted by a lot of people. It holds so much, this fits my diaries in it as well, which makes it really handy for like a work bag and things like that. The closure can be a little bit fiddly sometimes, but uh, the zip pocket at the back makes it handy to have like your really important things that you need to get to super quick in there. Top handle, crossbody. I definitely think the strap could be nicer. There's definitely scope for them to bring out straps that are particularly for this bag to change it up a little bit. Maybe, I don't know what, something a little bit more supple. This is quite rigid. So when it like falls down, it's like, but that's the only negative I have to say about this bag because I love it. And I feel like it's such a bag that's like associated with me. I love it. Next up, we have the Jimmy Choo like bowling bag style. This is such a great bag for holding a lot of stuff in it. It's again, it's one of those small sizes, but there's so much room because it's really nice and deep. It's got the crossbody strap as well. And it was, I think it was one of the first bags to come with the new Jimmy Choo logo on it as well. I think a timeless black bag like this is really, really handy and the straps are so durable. But yeah, really good bag if you're looking for a black, quite simple leather bag that holds lots of stuff because it is super duper practical. Next. Up. This is another secondhand purchase that I got, but I ended up getting it like brand new, but it was secondhand. This is the Balenciaga like city moto, moto city bag. I can never remember the name. I don't know if I could ever sell this. I just don't know because it, it was such a find. I think I got this for like 500 pounds. A stylist was selling it. And I think this is one of those styles that's gonna keep coming back around. And again, with the black and the gold, it's such a timeless look. And it's one of those moments in my career when I really started like researching bags, searching for bags and getting them like at a better price. I went and picked this up from the lady's house as well after she was selling it on eBay. So <laughs> I, I, yeah, I loved it, but she had the receipt and everything. So it was all authenticated, but yeah, this bag is a moment, a moment. Next up, we have the Chanel Trendy. This is one of the bags that was like burst onto the like Chanel handbag scene and it has done things like this bag really is so beautiful and I do actually wear this a lot especially in winter this is such a useful bag to have and I feel like this is what I wanted with regards to the classic flap this is definitely more me I'm more of a trendy girl than I am the classic flap and I know that now this also holds so much more stuff like it's got three compartments and it's also got the back compartment as well it's got the crossbody and the top handle although I have seen the classic flaps they've done them this year with top handles as well which I'm really excited about I might have to see but you know I'm not too sure on it I'm not sure if it's me but this is definitely me it goes so lovely with boots and a lot of the boots that I have in my collection and it's one of those those bags that you see like the cool girl wearing but you also see the classic girl wearing and I really like that I like that it kind of has synergy with everyone's style so yeah definitely a favorite Next up, we have the Petite Mal bag. This is the Louis Vuitton Petite Mal, and this again I got from Vestiaire Collective. I feel like this is the bag that commemorates my love of the Louis Vuitton trunks, and it is such a statement bag to wear with outfits. Totally impractical, it is the worst bag for putting stuff in, but still I go back to it time and time again because it is beautiful weighs a ton like when this hits my floor it does damage and it does fall off my shelves quite often because it's like weighted at the front so yeah there is a helicopter going over my house as we speak which makes this extremely annoying but we continue <laughs> i love this bag i believe it's come out in like a, a bigger size which makes it more practical there's so many different like styles of this i would love to see this in like the okay i give up the the the, the helicopter wins Oh, it's, 
a Chinook. We always get those going over. Um, I would love to see this in the sort of classic tan, like leather piping and then with the original monogramming. I would love to see that and I would buy it in a heartbeat. I love this bag. It's a love-hate relationship because it's so impractical, but I love it, it's beautiful, and it's such a talking piece. Killing two birds with one stone, I have these two bags. This, I can't, this is the Lady Dior Prom, is it the Dior, Dior Promenade? This bag doesn't exist anymore, you can't buy this anymore. I still have it because I think I, I'll wear it, I don't know, but I actually wear this way more than I wear this. This was a freebie with the lipsticks and that's why every year I'm kind of like, when Dior Beauty releases this, although they need to just do it without the, the glittery stuff like on it because that makes it not wearable as a clutch in my personal opinion. This was like the first one that they did and this is so like wearable and it's such a great clutch because it's got this huge mirror in it and a receipt apparently probably from days gone by when I used to go out but this is so handy as a clutch really really handy um, but yeah I think this year Dior if you're going to release this again just do it with the gold or the champagne and um, just keep it to the text because it really does like make it into a piece that's wearable and I think that's brilliant I remember seeing someone say like if you wear the Dior gift with purchase it's like cringe I don't think that at all I think this is amazing and I think you get it for like a hundred pounds or something I might be wrong on that don't hold me to it but it's it's brilliant and I think it's one of those pieces that I've worn so much and considering it's like a essentially kind of like a gift with purchase I love it and finally we are on to like my holdalls this is like the home stretch we've got four bags left if you're still with me guys let me know which one has been your favorite bag so far because i need a drink of water so badly i don't think i've spoken this much since before lockdown okay this is a lot we've been filming for nearly two hours <laughs> But yes, we're on to my holdalls, and I think we're gonna have some changes in opinions here and some new additions as well. First up, we have the Dior Book Tote, and this was like the pinnacle piece, I think, in my last collection video. I still love this bag. I do really love this bag, and I love, I don't know what it is, I just really like the bag. I definitely don't like the smaller versions. I think that they are, like, in my own opinion, ridiculous because they're just. Yeah, it doesn't work for me. This as a book tote works so well. In relation to some other bags that I now have, I reach for it less because it is quite heavy and it is quite restricted with this strap. I know it's a book tote, so it's supposed to be used for like books and things like that, but most people don't just use a bag for carrying a load of books around. Maybe if I was like at uni or something like that, although I don't think I would have had this at university, but <laughs> lol. <laughs> No, I would have had like a Jane Norman carrier bag or something like that. This is just, I don't wear it as much as I used to. It's definitely one of those bags that I think is more like Instagram, like looks good, if that makes sense. It looks great on your Instagram feed and it's it's such a beautifully like designed aesthetic, but I, I don't love it as much as this bag. And I feel like we've spoken about this already, but um, this bag that I picked up at Heathrow, this is the Chanel Deauville, 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 Deauville. This is the small one without the double handles. I grab this whenever I need to like transport a load of stuff and just throw it in like scarves. If I'm going on shoots, this bag always comes. It's great for me to throw my laptop in if I want to be wearing a smaller bag and still like look cute. I really love this because it's so good for traveling with as well because it just folds up. I've covered this before in another video, but seeing as this is my collection video, we can kind of go back and cover things. You don't ruin it when you pack it away, whereas the book tote, you can't pack that away. It is rigid, whereas this is nice and soft. So perhaps they cover two different areas, but for me, this is definitely my favorite one over that one. But no plans to sell. No plans to sell. Next up, we have my... Vintage Gucci, probably the only bit of Gucci that I have left in my bag collection because I have established that maybe Gucci's not for me. Like in this era, I loved Gucci, like this old style I, I loved. This was my grandpa's and it was something that my grandma gave me to remember him by because he was he was a bougie moo. <laughs> he had like a whole Gucci set and I remember, I don't know if I've told you this story before. Back in the day, my, my grandpa used to take my auntie on like protests she would go and protest against animal rights. My auntie's really like into animal rights and my grandpa would be stood like head to toe in Burberry and he would be there like with his Burberry umbrella sheltering her from the rain, but he would accompany her on those things and he would just always look so smart and uh, well-dressed 
and so this just kind of reminds me of that because my grandpa died when I was 18 and so this was this was like my little piece of him that I got. Another funny story, I think I may have mentioned this in my other collection video, was that they had the full set and my grandma said that they went on holiday somewhere and she got to the destination and had forgot the keys to the locks that came with them and in a moment of like complete and utter like not clarity rather than just getting something to cut the lock off she took a knife to them <laughs> and i was like grandma because my grandma is like one of the most intelligent well-educated women of the world and i even she was like i just don't know what came over me so yeah it's kind of a funny story that she tells me but yeah so this is not one that i use because it's falling apart and i don't think i would want to get it restored because you know this was carried by my grandpa uh, all over the world as part of his like business luggage and um this is this is the state that i had it in and i want to keep it that way so yeah that's that particular bag and then the last bag which you would have seen before this is my louis vuitton holdall i think it's like a keepall 45 or 50 i can't remember um uh, with the black leather instead of the tan kind of wish i'd got the the, the original one of this but I don't know if I would buy it again because I, I think I mentioned this before, the little rivet has come out. I have been offered to have it fixed, so I've just never had the opportunity to take it down to the store to get it fixed and especially not in a COVID world. The only thing that this needs is like pockets inside because it has no pocket. Like if you're using this as a gym bag, it's not hugely practical, but it is, it's a beautiful piece and an iconic piece and a timeless piece. To be honest, it does still get used if I'm going somewhere like overnight. This will usually have my like toiletries in and stuff like that because your girl has tanning, she has all of her body care products, she's got makeup, she's got skincare. Oh, this is just this is just for the the high maintenance ness of me. Perhaps I just got a bad one and that's why it it, it it broke, but I don't know if I would buy it again, that's for sure. We have finished finished the collection and I am I'm like running on empty right now, but please let me know which was your favorite bag in the comment section below. Let me know if you enjoy these videos. And just as a reminder, this is my collection of over 10 years worth of like building. And it really is like, it's a joy to be able to have this and share it with you. I appreciate that not everyone will have this, but this is like my passion. Some people are passionate about stamps. Some people are passionate about cars. I'm passionate about handbags and I just wanted to go through my collection because it is a video that I get asked for quite a lot and I love them, so yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in my next video. Take care, bye.